With the exception of passing the entire budget itself, it appears the pivotal issue for the 59th legislature is determining if expanding school choice will pass before the session ends and what form will it take, vouchers, tax credits, or something else. Education reporter Taylor Jackson has more on the competing views in the Oklahoma House, Senate, and Governor's Office. Taylor. Rich, last week the Senate passed an education package that includes a tax credit for homeschool and private school parents. But some lawmakers are concerned that this could hurt public schools. Thank you. Thank you. So Governor Kevin Stitt and State Superintendent Ryan Walters were joined by supporters on the south steps of the state capitol to support House Bill 1935 last week. The legislation would create the Oklahoma Parental Choice Tax Credit Act, giving tax cuts to parents who homeschool or send their children to private school. Not every kid learns the exact same way. Every child deserves a quality education uh, that fits their unique needs regardless of their zip code or their background. House Speaker McCall says the tax credit is different from vouchers as seen in previous proposals because the tax credit does not pool money from the appropriated publication fund, but instead will allow parents to use their own money before they file for the credit from the state. The state is going to honor and recognize up to $5,000 of educational costs that they would pay to a private school. But many Democratic leaders have concerns when it comes to House Bill 1935. Senator Kerry Hicks says Oklahoma has invested a lot of money into private education. Oklahoma has, at number one, um, outspent all of our surrounding states when it comes to public dollars being invested in private institutions. And I'll say that again, uh, we're number one um, and, and by a lot. Um, we have increased our public funding for private schools tenfold. Hicks says the bill lacks transparency. Standards requirements that every public school must undergo. Um, when we hand that money over to private institutions, they're not bound or held by those same um, rules. And so I think my, my biggest concern is that if it's public dollars, it deserves public transparency and the legislature is yielding that public transparency. Last Thursday, the Senate approved a $700 million education package that includes an amended House Bill 1935 and House Bill 2775, which appropriates $500 million to public education with $30 million to create the Rewarding Excellent Educators grant program. I want them to pass a great bill for our students in Oklahoma for all aspects of school, whether it's private, public or charter. We need movement and we need to act now. Parents in rural Oklahoma are not supportive of this type of policy. Parent Erica Wright is the founder of the Oklahoma Rural School Coalition. She says some parents are divided on the package because there are good aspects to it and some that are not good. On the House side, they, they put in a, a trigger, kind of a floor to to protect rural schools and public schools from, hey, if this tax credit side goes south, and depletes funding, it's not going to come out of the public schools. That was great, but the Senate took it out. Wright says while the passage of the education package as a whole is a great investment in Oklahoma schools, similar bills in other states haven't been successful. If federal funding takes a hit because the State Department doesn't act on those grants, that's a huge chunk of money that schools are going to have to backfill. I am concerned about how we will do that when we're spending all of this money over here based off of estimates that may or may not be true because we truly don't know how many people will apply for those credits. Wright hopes the Senate and House will find a compromise. I think both sides have their heels dug in, it seems to be, and I think both, um, both sets of legislators have their idea about what it needs to look like, and it doesn't seem to me that... Um, there's a lot of compromise going on right now, and I really wish we could see more of that. Both the governor and first lady Sarah Stitt say they want students from different economic backgrounds to have the same opportunities. What about the people that will never live out of their zip code and will never have that opportunity? They love their children just as much, and they want opportunity for their children just as much. But some question if the bill will actually help Oklahomans who live in underprivileged areas. I don't believe um, that this will 
increase access for certain families that they are they're trying uh, to appeal to um, and in fact I think it will actually worsen conditions for those underserved communities. Parents like Wright are also concerned about the rift between some lawmakers and the state superintendent of public instruction when it comes to federal funding. By virtue of his position, Superintendent Ryan Walters is a member of the OETA board. And we still don't have a CFO and um, he's refusing to appear before the House to ask, answer questions about the federal funding. Speaker McCall, who did not want the Senate to make amendments to House Bill 2775 and 1935, said in a statement that read in part, the Senate has touted their plans as having a more significant teacher pay raise than the House plan, when in fact their plan only provides full or partial raises for some. President pro Tim Greg Treat responded to these claims, calling Speaker McCall to end the political games in a statement that read in part. For him to continue to spread misinformation is disingenuous at best. Speaker McCall's insecurities about the House plan are plain to see. He knows the Senate plan is better. He knew our chamber took a more thoughtful approach and he refuses to operate in transparency. Bullying members of my caucus and my Senate colleagues will not be tolerated. Both supporters and opponents of the bill continue advocating as they wait to see the measure's fate.